C10 makes an awesome shelf. It really does. Look, it's a unicorn. My kids love this truck, not as much as I love it. And we're finally working on it again. Yay! Today, my buddy Scott Blair is coming by to help us with wheel fit. That's right. The 22s are going away. Those were awesome in 2008, I think, when I put them on. But they're a little too narrow. Sidewalls a little too short for my taste these days. So we're gonna check out an awesome tool today and find out what is the right size tire and wheel combo for the C10. Just as soon as we unbury it. So the last time you saw the C10, the guys from MRC Fab were here and we installed a brand new set of hydro shocks on this, replaced all the airbags, and we cut the front clip off the truck and installed a brand new set of Mandelbrot frame rails, control arms, all that. Truck is awesome, haven't driven it yet, but it doesn't lay flat on the ground. Now the fact that we have these ill-fitting wheels, not only do they look weird, but they're actually stopping this truck from laying on the ground. Let me show you what I mean. Come over here. So you notice the truck's kind of got a backwards rake. That's because the back of it's laid on the ground. The front of it won't lay out because the lower hydro shock mount is actually contacting the rim. And you can see how chewed up the rim is from the times we've rolled it around the garage with it rubbing on that. So part of today's plan here is to figure out what rims will fit this thing in terms of width, diameter, backspacing, all that, and how much tire can I stuff under the front of this? Because I'd like to have a wider set of tires and wheels up front that aren't as tall, and same deal in the back, a wider set of wheels that aren't as tall. This spaceship looking thing is the tool we're gonna use today. It's called the Gripper, and Scott invented a variation of this a long time ago that only held the tire in two places. This new version holds it in three places and it grabs onto the bead of the tire and uh, allows you to mock everything up. This goes for about 259 bucks, which is really not that much considering what it is and what it does. You know, Grab one for your car club, get some friends, go in on it together because obviously we're not all using this every day of our lives unless we own a shop but it is a nice aluminum piece that's engraved and uh, in the long run saves you a ton of money when you get the right wheel and the right tire every time you use it. So when I invented this tool 20 years ago, essentially I wanted to find a way that we could simulate an actual wheel and be able to change the dimensions, both the width and the backspace independently from each other so that we can get a complete test fit on any vehicle. So how I do that is, is you've got a horizontal extension that moves back and forth here. If you'll notice here and here, this represents the overall width of the wheel with the flanges here and here where you would typically hammer weights. The measured width where the tire sits is actually in here, which is one inch less than the overall width because that's where we actually measure from. So if you buy a 10 inch wide wheel, physically it's going to be 11 inches overall. So that's how that works. And this will independently move for our width and then we can actually look at our backspace using the same ruler mark. This vertical extension, wherever it lines up on the backside, your faceplate is actually bolted here. And you'll see that in this representation, that would be a four and a half inch backspace. And what that does is that measures from the rear flange to the mounting surface where the tool actually bolts to the hub. And that's it. That's everything that you need to know in regards to how this thing actually measures done is we've essentially we've lifted the truck and we put a block of wood under the lower a-arm and now we've let the the truck and the weight go back down to compress the suspension now as you can see here as we look over and we turn the wheel lock to lock we can essentially simulate what's going to happen when this truck goes into a hard corner under load 
to make sure that our tire doesn't hit, rub, or touch anything. So way back in the day, this was one of the first C10s on the West Coast to lay flat on the rockers with 22-inch wheels. I cared about things like that back in the day, and now, eh, not so much. We're going to replace these. They're not wide enough. They're too tall. These are 28-inch tall tires. They're 255-30ZR22 Nitto NT555. They're pretty much dry rotted because they've been sitting around for 13 years in various shops and only have about 100 miles on them. So probably not safe. That's a Boyd Coddington F08 five-spoke. Classic looking wheel, but taller than I want it to be. So today we're going to figure out how much rubber can we stuff under there, and I'd like it overall to be a shorter tire. They don't need to be 28 inches tall. I'm going for performance this time. So this, I didn't even look. I don't even know what it is. It's a 295 something. What do we got here, Scott? 295 30 20 Michelin. Much, much wider. Let's measure it. This one here is 12 inches wide. I don't know if this is going to fit up front. And it's about 26 inches tall, so this is nearly two inches shorter in height and about two inches wider. Might not fit, but this tool will tell us whether it works. Let's do it. This is a big tire. Can it fit? visually centering the wheel up using the hub as a reference and just hand torquing down the lug nuts. I've got some more standard uh, conical lug nuts if you want. Nope, this, these are conical. They're, they're 60 degree. It's fine. You can use pretty much whatever came off the car because it's a flat surface. You can use a mag shank or you can use a conical seat like this right here. And just hand tight is good enough. You don't need to put an impact on it. Okay, so now we are good to go. Now I just threw together the tool for the backspace just to assemble it, not knowing exactly what's going to happen. But if you'll look and see, you can actually tell that if this was an actual wheel, we're almost going to be touching the outer tie rod bolt right there with a 20 inch wheel. So we have too much backspacing or too wide of a wheel? Could be either. And the and tool is adjustable so you can simulate a wheel with less backspacing just by adjusting the tool, right? Yeah. All I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen a knob. And we're going to maintain our width because we really want to try to keep this width if possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to loosen the knobs and I'm going to change to a lower backspace, essentially moving the tool and tire out here toward the street. All right, so now we're going to try for a four inch backspace. And now we're going to rotate and we're going to see how this tire is going to look as it rotates around the steering axis and see if we rub or touch anywhere. All right, at this point, we're going to turn the wheel lock to lock. And what I'm going to be looking for is clearance issues with the tool touching part of the suspension, which would obviously represent the wheel's going to touch something, or if the tire touches something, which would obviously tear up a $400 tire. Okay. So let's turn back the other way and see how we're going to look on the firewall side here. I'm also checking my clearance underneath the fender here, which we've got at the thickness of my hand. Plenty of room there. And we've got at least a good two inches worth of room to the firewall. So, so we can run a 295 on this. All day long. Whew. And clear and clear these big spherical rod ends that you've got on this on this massive suspension as well. Okay, so then the last test is to lay the truck down and see will the tire still clear the fender. It right. looks like it will. It, it, it looks good here, so let's give it a try and see how it works. So the fender tapers up right here, so what we're looking for is when we lower the truck down and the tire tucks up, does the tire still clear the fender all the way up here? Okay, here we go. That's a 295-30R20 Michelin Pilot 4S. In the front of my C10. It's good. It's a lot of tire. It's better than this. 255, 30, 22. Big day. 
been two weeks since we last worked on this truck, and during that time, Forge Line built us a custom set of wheels, and SummitRacing.com shipped us the right size tires. Let's recap, though. This is our old rolling stock, and it's a weird setup. So, Boyd Coddington F08 two-piece wheels welded together. Beautiful wheels, but when I ordered them, we just kind of ballparked what we thought we needed, and what we ended up with were 22 inch wheels, 10s in the back, eight and a halfs in the front. But at the time, the only tires we could get to fit were these Nitto Extreme 555s. This is a 255 3022, which oddly enough is a half inch taller than the rear tires, a 295 25 22. Rubber bands, and yeah, that's an odd, that's a weird stagger, half inch taller tires in the front than the back. So we're gonna get rid of these, right? And uh, before I do, take a look at how narrow these are, right? So we've got this here. It's about a 10 inch wide tire. This is an about an 11 inch wide tire. And that's 295. This is our new 295, 12 inch wide tire. Now this is a Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. This is supercar stuff. I mean, this is as good as it's gonna get, probably, I don't know, the truck might not even deserve these, but. We were lucky enough to get our hands on some, so we're gonna rock these. And we'll probably need some five-point harnesses to keep from throwing ourselves out of the truck when we go around a corner, because they're that sticky. Now the wheels are insane. If you know the new forge line, then you know quality, right? This is a true three-piece wheel that is bolted together. Those are titanium screws, all right? The whole thing is bolted together, beautifully powder coated, seam sealed right there. If you ever damage the wheel, you can unbolt it and they can rehoop this thing, which is awesome. That's a matte bronze finish, powder coated and polished lip. This is called the GA3 wheel and it's very lightweight. And as you're gonna see, a real good indicator of how well a wheel is built and how good a tire is, is how much weight it requires to balance them. I'm betting almost nothing for these, very minimal. But let's go out to the van and find out what it's actually going to take to mount that tire on this wheel. Not only did Scott invent the wheel fit and the tire grip, but he also has this business, 2U Tire. He will come to your house, he will measure your car, figure out what fits, order everything for you, and once the wheels are built and the tires are in, he will show up at your house and install them and if you need a life-changing career, he will teach you how to do this yourself and start your own business. Scott, you go to somebody's house, what does it cost them to have you measure their hot rod or muscle car or import to figure out what fits? Uh, typically that runs about $125 for you to come out and do a front and rear fitment. Okay, and when you come back to do the install, what are they looking at? Uh, if you know, Just for the labor, mounting and balancing, everything all in that, somewhere between $160 to $200. So about the same price as you going to a wheel and tire store and sitting around for several hours, you can stay in your pajamas while Scott does all the work in your driveway and just sends you a text when it's all done. And the equipment is no joke. Check it out. So tell me and the folks at home why your balancing machine is way better than most others because it's pretty awesome. Yeah, so what we're going to do here in just a minute with yours is this is an expandable collet. Now, most people are used to seeing the cone, all right, that's used on a balancer, and you're trying to get the wheel to find center, or basically on a triangle. Well, this is an expandable collet. It's part of the Havika collection that we actually sell as part of this, and this is called a segmented collet that will actually open up in the center board. Now, imagine your wheel is sitting on this flange. Now, when that opens up inside there, it holds the wheel dead center to the center line of the balancer so that we're not introducing any other variations into the balance. And then to hold it from the front side, let me use this adjustable pen plate. Essentially, it can change the bolt pattern to fit the wheel. And once it fits it, we just lock down on it. So now you've got hub centric on the inside and lug centric from the outside. It's dead center. And now we haven't introduced another variable into the balance. Like a worn out, worn out aluminum cone or something like that. Absolutely, I find that quite a bit that happens. And a lot of times, even in the shops, this is the wing nut that essentially holds all this together. I'll find many times that the wing nut's got a chunk missing, something that's wrong on one side that's causing the actual wing nut to not be balanced. And then they're chasing weights and you go back and go back. 
You know, I've got I never even thought of that. Yeah, I've got clients that have gone back five or six times and they still have vibrations and they finally find me and I fix their problem usually within about 45 minutes. Essentially, a, a, mount, a, a, a rotate balance with this type of precision and I've got a customer for life. Wow. And trust me when I say he's mobile. Tell me the story. This is a great example of how mobile you are. Tell me about what happened after the hurricane, where you went and who you helped. Yeah, so I live down on the coast down in uh, down in Alabama. And when uh, the hurricane Michael came through and went into Florida, uh, I was there within a couple of days. So I'm able to put this Sprinter van essentially on site with all this capability. The back half is inventory. So I had this thing completely stacked up with trailer tires and truck tires of, you know, light truck tires for some of my clients that were going to be down there. And it gave me the ability to actually get in there. And uh, you know, what really is cool is, there were caregivers down there who were out there in this rural area through sent through that middle part of the panhandle and they had already punctured tires and they were on donuts and they're having to try to get in and out of i mean just debris everywhere and uh, power lines are down and uh, one lady i was able to actually get into her house while she was taking care of elderly uh, parents herself and out on the street i was able to do a flat repair for her to get her back on her regular tire and get her off the donut and uh, that's quite really a few cool. other people yeah there was a bunch of other people that came down there all trying to help out but by the time they got off the interstate into the heart of that Blunchtown area uh, they had tire problems and I was able to actually be there and help them who were bringing in support supplies that everybody needed like food water clothing you know other things like that that is awesome and I mentioned it earlier that this is a thriving business that you could get into as well and Scott will train you and set you up with the truck and anything else you need should you decide whatever you're doing right now isn't what you're passionate about yeah and you'll notice all these helper arms that takes the place of two or three more people and uh, you'd see this in a normal tire store that have just the old type equipment and there'd be three or four guys and breaker bars and yeah, you know, metal flying everywhere. You know, they've got blood out of their eye where the breaker bar came up and hit them. And I've got all this components here. And uh, it's not an easy job, don't get me wrong. But I mean, I've already mounted up two of them and it's just pretty much straightforward at that point. the air out and what will happen is you'll see some more bubbles come up the tire right now is not actually concentric to the to the barrel of the rim okay that pop that you hear on the inside there's that safety hump and the tire bead gets caught on that and it's only by pressure that it gets it raises up over that safety hump and when it does that pow it hits the flange which is this part right here so you've introduced a fifty thousandths of an inch out around okay. in the tire. Right. And you won't see very many people do this. So I'm gonna pop the core, it's gonna get loud, but you're gonna watch some bubbles probably come up. What's happening is the tire's gonna physically just relax and shrink, and then we know that the tire is round to the rim at that point, and it'll balance out with no problems. Uh. guys get this kind of work done locally where you're at you make sure they do this otherwise you're going to have a vibration and they'll balance this thing from now to doomsday and it'll still vibrate because imagine like you're driving on a cam load that's basically what you've created yeah it's not round simply because of how they mounted it and they if you take all the air back out then it relaxes goes round again that's it now i'm going to bring it all back up to pressure so then you inflate it and then you balance it so these are the nicest wheels I think I've ever owned. And my guess is they'll take very little weight. That wheel is worth more than my first car. Yeah, I think they'll take very little weight to balance out with these tires on these wheels. This is as good as it gets as far as I'm concerned. This is the top end Michelin tire that they have short of a full on race tire. So it should, it should be round then. You can't get any rounder than that. It needs no weight. It needs zero weight. This it is balanced. This, this assembly is balanced with no weight. So we're gonna add, we're gonna stick nothing. We're gonna clamp nothing to this forge line wheel in this Michelin tire, and it's round and needs nothing. Nothing. 
200 miles an hour all day long and the steering wheel wouldn't even vibrate. Damn. Yeah. That's what you're paying for. Wow. If you guys need a moment alone after viewing this, I understand. Jesus. That is so cool. Fits too. Fits good. Three more to go. Uh... To get a different set of lug nuts. Oh, you don't like these? You bought them. They were a necessary evil. We have metric studs in the back of this because this rear upright and diff came out of, I think, a 2003 Ford Expedition. It's basically Mustang Cobra 8.8 inch center section. And uh, we made our own control arms, but the spindle is stock Expedition stuff and we welded up the brake rotors and drilled them for five lug, but it's still, I don't know why we kept the metric studs, but we did. That's so cool. Is it time? Should we let it down? We get to set it down? Oh gosh. Oh, big moment, let's do this. Going. Oh, that looks cool. Well, there you have it. Proper fitting wheels and tires. Thanks to everybody that helped out. This is it laid on the ground. Obviously, we can't turn with it like this, but thanks to the hydro shocks, we'll be able to lift it up, drive down the road, over speed bumps and around corners, and hopefully this thing rips. We won't know for a little while. We've got to do steering, exhaust, brakes, plumbing, wiring, a whole bunch more stuff, but the big item is out of the way. Now it at least rolls. We just gotta make it stop and go now. So let's see what ride height looks like. <laughs> going down the highway if you drove it all the way up and then obviously we can drive it pretty much at any height we want other than that as long as it'll get over whatever's in front of us. Awesome.